Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Beautiful Sunday afternoon. Um, starting a few minutes late here. This is going to be my Sunday afternoon shoe builds a insert build here um, stream. Um, my first build that I want to do is a Dwarven Barbarian. I want to do it as a free-to-play, which is why I'm on a free account. Um, I'm going to take you right from character creation right up to level 20. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Beautiful Sunday afternoon. Um, ah, I guess starting a few minutes feedback later. there. This is going to be my Sunday afternoon. So I can close that out. All right, so I know I'm streaming. Um, so yeah, what was I saying? Um, it's going to be free to play. I'm going to use um, a first life build. It's no characters on the server at all in this account. Um, so let's jump right into it, I guess. We're going to do a bar bar Dwarven Barbarian. And as you can see right underneath where my mouse is right now, um, once I get this build started, I am actually going to post it on the forums, and that will be a URL to the forums to see the build. Um, if you want to try to build one yourself, I will also include links to the videos from this stream on creating this character and running it up to level 20. Um, so let's get started. Create. I didn't have a lot of time to do um, any researching um, to actually come up with a really good build. So I'm going to do it based on personal experience on this one. Um, because we don't have that uh, link up yet, because it's not an option right now, Titan. Um, we can make that go away because it's not an option. And I'm actually going to take the um, the... Twitch chat out of the stream for a bit so that you can see what I'm doing as I build. Um, so it's going to be a melee build because it's barbarian. And you can't see my mouse, can you? Uh, I'm not sure why you can't see my mouse. I know that you won't be able to hear any game sounds, but that's okay. So anyway, we're going to go to class. I don't know why. Oh, there's my mouse. It came back. That must not have been focused. We do Barbarian. Um, we're going to pick a path. Pre-built pre paths have been pretty much um, described as less than useful for most people. Um, the best way to build a character is to customize in DDO. I mean, if you're first life and you really want to do these, um, predefined paths, you can do them. Not all of them are survivable. Um, most experienced players don't even touch them because you're just, they're just really low end on survivability. Um, I don't have access to any of these additional things, so we're going to go with, look through some stats here. Um, if we go back and we pick a course and we click on stats it'll tell you strength dex con and then if you pick elf it'll be strength con dex halfling is strength and con then dex and then dwarf will be strength con dex as well um, dwarf gets a little bit more con a little less charisma um, Dwarves are very tough and hardy, but not as charismatic. That's okay. Halflings are agile and small. Well, we don't really care too much about agile or small. They're not strong. It's not very good for a barbarian. Um, elves are dexterous, but less hardy. That's not very good. Versatility is the greatest strength of humans. They can do well in any of the classes. So for us, because of what we have available, it's either human or dwarf. And dwarves are a lot more, a lot, a lot tougher, um, and they're also naturally resistant to many forms of magic and are stable on their feet, which is good for a barbarian. Um, so we'll go back to path, customize, race, dwarf. When you do customize, it doesn't give you stats, but you have an idea of what you want from having a thing selected. Um, I personally like female tunes; they're more fun to play. Um, so, as a Barbarian, you want to strength out, max out your strength. You want to dump as much as you can um, into Con, And that kind of leaves you two points left over. Um, 
Strength to hit and damage is important. Con for survivability is important. Um, when you rage as a barbarian, you actually take a hit to your armor class. Um, and you also take a, a hit to will saves. You can make up some of these. Um, a lot of people like to actually go 16 strength. Or, no, full strength, 16 con, which leaves you 8 points left. Um, I'm going to go 18, 16, um, leave 6 points. I want to put a couple in decks for armor class. That's basically what the default builds show on the previous screen. Um, can one buy Warforge? Most certainly. Um, you can buy Turbine Points and then buy Warforge if you wanted to. Um, but the purpose of this tutorial is to do it with all free-to-play stuff, not to actually buy anything. So um, future lives on this tune will actually have some purchase stuff. Um, the last two points there, there was a lot of debate in peop between people on whether to put it into intelligence for skill points or wisdom for will saves. Um, personally, I like to put it into intelligence for the extra skill point. Um, so if we click on next, we get into our skill points. Um, First thing I always recommend doing is putting in one full point of tumble so that you're able to tumble. Um, I, you can either in, max out intimidate or diplomacy, depending on if you want aggro or not. I like intimidate on barbarian tunes. I like to take the aggro. Um, because strength is our main stat and jump is strength based, I don't see a lot of value of investing anything in the jump simply because you will get it between your strength modifier and the jump spell, which you can get in potion form and all kinds of stuff, so that's not too useful. Um, I do put in some points into swim and balance. Um, what this does is it leaves me with two skill points to assign. As a Barbarian, I have a lot of hit points, and if I intend on being able to run some stuff solo, the ability to recover hit points from a Shrine uses your heal skill. Um, not too important if you have healers in the party, because it actually applies to the whole party. Some people go there. Um, I think I'm going to actually put it into listener spot. I actually like the idea. Well, listen is class based, so I can put it into there and boost that up faster than spot. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go four intimidate, four swim, um, two listen, two balance, and two into tumble, or one into tumble. And that uses up all my points there. So now I get to pick a feat. Um, some people go with power attack first. I don't see a lot of use for it at level one. I prefer to go with two-handed fighting at level one. Um, gives you glancing blows right off the bat. Very useful. I actually take power attack at level three. So we're going to go through with two-handed fighting. This gives us an overview of what we've built. A lot of good dwarven stuff, including fast movement, giant evasion. Helpful. Plus four AC bonus when attacked by creatures of giant type. We get martial weapons, which includes axes and falchions and stuff like that. Uh, mauls. Two-handed fighting, wilderness lore. 
All right, so we'll click on next. Um, let's see here. Let's just do some randomize until I get a look I like. I want a good good looking dwarf. Some people will say that's not possible. Um, I don't like the whole scar on the face thing, so we're going to lock that in. That's not bad, except I don't like the color of the eyes. There we go. Really light blue eyes. Or green. Yeah, I'm not a big green fan. We'll go with blue. All right. So that looks decent. Um, we are going to go... Chaotic good, I think. Uh, Dirty Dexter asks, says they haven't played a barb in a minute. Um, I'm guessing they mean a longer duration than that. They used to strongly advocate maxing con in order to maximize time raged. Does the new build allow for you to be raged pretty much all the time regardless now? Um, once you get a few levels in and you start spending some action points on the ability to extend your rage and that kind of thing, yes. Um, Another option is actually to max out Khan and only put in enough strength for acquiring your feats as a dwarf. And then when you hit max, uh, hit level 5, you can actually spend some action points to do Khan to damage. Um, but that's not how I'm going to do this build. Um, I'm going to name this build Barbarian. Barbarian. Uh, uh, cobbled by shoe maker. Uh, create. So there's our barbarian. Um, it's actually just a barbarian, but I like the I like the name. And when I get to the second life and onward, you'll um, conda damage only works if you're wearing full plate and have a shield. Uh, that's not how the description reads, but I still need to play with that idea a little bit and test it. Um, for this build, we're just going to do a regular Barbarian free-to-play, so let's enter. Pretty stout, beefy-looking Barbarian here. For some reason, you're not getting in-game audio. Uh, let's see if I can fix that. Let's see if that fixes it. Come on, Jeets, talk. So yeah, you're not getting, not getting in-game sound still. Let me see if I can fix that. Options, audio,
That takes sound away from me. Um, can you hear it now? Doesn't look like it. Now, so there's no audio for anybody right now. Let's see if I can get audio working here. Can you move? All right, looks like you're getting something. Can you hear um, Jeets there okay? It might be coming through. Can you talk? Speak to me. Alright, so it looks like you can hear it. Alright, so there we go. Alright, lead the way. Was true. No one but you made it to the island alive. Follow me. It may be worth following this rogue. For now. You can see we got some tool tips on the side over here. If you're a first time player, those will be of some interest. Here we are. Tells you how to talk to NPCs, <laughs> how to move around and move the camera, and talking to NPCs, punch a crate, pick up some copper. Hey Jeets, give me my great axe. As you can see, you, you do still get a classic D&D &D red box. It is useless. Um, now you can pretty much just throw it away. I'm going to put it in the other tab. It's actually not entirely useless. Um, when you hit level 4, you can open it and get the bag out of it. Everything else you can pretty much just throw away. Um, the cards are useless, except to add to your gallery. Um, let me rearrange my UI a little bit here. Drag this up here, put this down here. Drag this down here. Drag out some extras here. <coughs> Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five, six, seven, eight. The six can go down here. Number seven can go down here. Take me just a minute to set up my UI bar here. Nine and ten, back to that there. So number ten can go over here on the side number nine number eight at three today well, I run until 6 p.m. Eastern Titan um, I don't know if I'll be using that whole amount of time or not but so we have our <coughs> our graphics set what I usually do is on graphics I have it detect op optimal settings, and then adv advanced graphics. I go to object draw district, object draw distance, and go ultra high. UI settings show cooldowns. Yes. Show the network status. I don't need to see the hints. And then I scroll down and show vital bar percentage, which will bug out your temporary hit points and spell points, what you see. Show percentage values in party UI, no. Large, show UI for me. Show pet vitals. Um, justify icons to screen left. No, I don't want to do that. 
and that's pretty much it for that. I can drag this up. I can take this interface and I put it down here. So I'll talk to Cheats again real quick. Copper. Salimus is in the grotto. I shall show you the way. Yep, I am picking up copper. As a first life tune, starter potion. Ah, no confirmation on those anymore. This is all from dragon wrecked ships like you. As a first life tune, I need all the copper I can get. I believe I'm on Orion. If I remember correctly, that was the server I picked for this tune. Hmm. Resist Sonic. I've never seen that stuff dropped here before. Here we are. Go New 55 silver. Hop into the the grotto here. It's a solo only quest. <laughs> Is this Salimus, the cleric you were sent to find? Alright, let's go to skills. Let's go to feats real quick, grab attack. That should always be up here on the hotbar. Uh, nothing else square that's active that I need. Skills. Nothing that's active that I need. I don't have any of those or those yet. There's my build for that. Let's talk to Salimus real quick. All right, I'm ready. Let's go. I shall surround us with a protection spell. Her spell temporarily prevents you from dying, though you can still suffer injuries. Let's adjust this my sound a little bit more. Off when you leave these caves. Oh yeah, I'm through the creation screen so I can turn on my chat again real quick. Uh, Twitch chat, DDO stream right there. Slide that in right there. I may actually put in another hotbar over here eventually. Uh, audio, let's turn down music. And ambient sound to 30 on each for those for now. <coughs> Welcome, Rothko. St. Janney. St. Janablay. You hear the shuffling and wheezing of some uh, creature. Control equal to lock my toolbars for now. Ahead. Target the swagim. One swing and it's dead. The corroded lever Grab at the my rear of this corridor. Die, Most stick that up there. The gate where the cleric Salimus is waiting. Open the gate. That drops. Moving right on through here. Good job, but no time to dawdle. Salimus isn't too hot to me. Thanks for putting in the good work. Hey, Danny. It would be logical to assume. There are more of them up there. Stay I actually haven't listened to the music for this for a very long time, like five years. I've actually turned off all the music because. One of the hardest things about this game is that there's no ability to have it automatically turn down the music and stuff when people are talking and you can't hear people over the music. So I usually have it turned down very low. So walking wretches, are you scared of me? Come down and fight. Put our healing potion up there. Might as well drink our sonic potion. So 
such is the fate of evil. Now, let's find a way out of here. Can't pick this. Does anyone see a key? Curious. I just stepped on something. A lamp. Good work. There's a silver key. I see a key down there. Who's up for a swim? Teaches you how to swim. You grab the silver key. Time to swim for the surface. Space bar to swim up quickly. You can use your right mouse click button to point where you want to go. And then just use forward to actually go. That's how you properly swim. You can also use T on your keyboard to lock it in mouse look mode. All shrine here. We're not too interested in. Let's take a moment to rest. Ha! I still got plenty of stamina. I can go all night long. Come on, Jeets, quit lagging. Crikey. Yes, Jeets, tell me your story. See Jeets popping the box open. And you open the door. Moving on. You having fun? Time for us to go. The high priestess should be up ahead. The onus for much suffering rests squarely upon her slimy, webbed hands. Can you either wait for? Her? There she. Telebron open it, or you can pop it open yourself. I kind of want to do this semi quickly, so I'm just going to do it myself. Having some lag issues here. At some point I will upgrade from 1 megabit per second for my upload. My download is fine, I don't know why I'm lagging in play, but upload is low. Pop the chest open, loot all, and actually equipped our chainmail there. Battle, battle worn chain shirt. We're gonna put our arrows where they belong so it doesn't take up an inventory slot. Gonna put our ring up on the hut bar and equip that. Um, I like having my weapons over here so that bow is going to go there, lock that, <coughs> put it in the back, I like having my forward tabs open in my inventory, our rogue senses are tingling, there's something fishy in this room, try searching around. Get up there and search. You feel a stiff draft from somewhere in this room. Perhaps the hidden passage to the village is in here. Found the secret path. Brilliant. Tidy lashes and pipes. Let's see if we can tumble. Here I come. Yeah, I guess you can't really see it too well. We're almost done here. The way out is up ahead. But first, I want to reward you for your assistance. Please come speak with me. Give me my Ember Great Axe, woman. Because you love me. Pick up the Ember Great Axe, and we're actually going to switch to that. Drag that down there and lock it. You can throw this starter Rusty Great Axe away. We need an 
now ent enter into the grotto. Because we're a free-to-play account on this, stepping out of the grotto, you find yourself. In we will need to run through each this place for quest three times. Judging once on normal to unlock now, hard, once on hard to unlock elite, and once on elite for However, max favor. Some hopeful that gives us some more experience that way. Talk to Randall. Close window. Talk to Kaja. Pick up that quest. Go down, we can talk to Linus. Pick up that quest. Talk to Baldar, pick up that quest. Talk to the general vendor. Nothing that we need to repair. Nothing that we need to sell yet. Alright, so we're pretty good here. Um, I actually recommend the first quest that you do is the Stormhouse. The storehouse here. It actually has the least um, physical interactions that you have to do with people. So we're going to run this one. It tells us that our options are normal. Hard and elite are locked because we're a first life player. Um, when you're new, setting it as a public group isn't a bad idea. Especially on Snowy Corthos. Dust and um, fill this ill-maintained storehouse. You can hear the turn on auto attack. Of vermin nearby. Break the barrel. We wait a second. Some spiders will spawn. Kill a spider. Now, in your early levels here, you're going to want to break and kill everything that you can. So we run around. We break everything. We want max experience for this series of quests in order to be level up. One of the things about free-to-play accounts is you don't have access to all of the content yet, so you need as much experience as you can get any way that you can get it. So, full barrel breaking, killing, optionals is good. Light repair. If you were a Warforged, you might want to pick that up. We don't have any use for it, really. Potion of Tumbling. Well, actually, we are going to pick it up. For the simple fact that we can sell it for a couple copper pieces. This appears to be the main store. It seems the villagers have been preparing for a protracted siege. Now, because of the, the fact that the process of leveling up, leveling up can be long and tedious, um, I'm going to run for a couple more hours today, and then I'm actually going to do some leveling up a off the stream. Although I won't take, or I will do some experience farming off the stream, but I won't actually take any levels except on stream. So we're going to pick up the key, kill, pull. EX, however you pronounce that. Give him a kill, go down around the corner, pop the chest. We have the Festivus going on right now, it gives us some copper festival coins, that'll be good. Um, we are restricted as a barbarian to light and I believe medium armor. We go to character feats, um, light armor proficiency, medium armor proficiency. So we can wear robes and light stuff like chain and breastplates. Um, plus three robe. Doesn't help us much. Let's drink our potion of tumbling here. Let's throw that coin and tab in there. <coughs> A spider to kill. Or two. Break the base, pick up the copper. Um, I should probably show you your inventory tab. So, on the inventory tab, we have what are called tabs up here on the top. You get three of them to start with. 
you get 20 slots per tab um, you get weapon sets where you if you're a two weapon fighter or a board sword and board or you use a rune arm if you use anything that requires two weapons or two items to go in your hands then you can use your weapon sets um, a useful thing to do is actually take an empty weapon set and put it on a hotbar so that way when you're fighting oozes you can quickly switch to no weapons to punch them so you don't damage your weapon um, you have your astral shards which were free to play so we don't have any to start with you've got platinum gold silver and copper um, every 10 copper is a silver every 10 silver is a gold every 10 gold is a platinum um, you can so show some details here. It tells you what your damage is on your axe. 1d12 plus 6. You have a 20x3 critical. So if you roll a 20 and you confirm it, you will get x3 damage for whatever you were going to roll. Um, tells you a little bit about your armor class. As a barbarian, you have a lot of strength, so you can carry a lot of weight. Um, you've got your different item slots here. I'm not going to go too much into that just yet. Got your character sheet, which shows your experience, what your build is, your strength, your abilities, your damage reductions, your resistances, tells you how much resistant how much of each element you can resist. This last one is sonic, not force. So you'll later on you'll come into some stuff that does force damage. You're not protected by that. Um, you've got your physical resistance rating, which people call PRR tells you how much so you'll take one percent less damage with a one prr at level one uh, magical resistance rating tells you how much damage you can resist from certain types of attacks uh, attack bonuses double strike double shot attack speeds um, extra damage extra hits and speed weapon power um, as a barbarian apparently we have two weapon power right off the bat not exactly sure what that does i'm not a big melee person on that kind of thing spell power for casters um actually have negative one for negative and positive spell power critical range and multipliers uh, hit points spell points key for monks armor class it breaks it down for you you have 58 percent chance to dodge or um to protect yourself from a spell from damage from armor class <coughs> Um, your various saves for certain things. You get your skills. Gives you an actual total for those feats that you've taken. You don't get any spells as a barbarian. Enhancements that you'll take as you level up. Crafting, which we'll get into at some point. You have a bio where you can put in notes. It's like a notepad that other people can see. All right, so let's do some more breaking. Because we're poor, we only have what eight platinum right now most things are defined in the amount of platinum that you have the door swings open revealing a magical it appears the so floor we're pretty much done with this quest we got a few more breakables to do we just picked up Ransack, which means we've broken everything that we need. We have Aggression Bonus, which is the max that we can do in this quest because we've killed everything. These give extra percentages. If you have a Rogue in your party, you can do Traps or an Artificer. That's very useful. You can get up to 30% bonus there. So it's recommended to pick up those extra classes if you can in your party. There are two ways to solve this puzzle do it the way that I'm doing it here, which is not the normal way that I do it. experience first life on normal click on the door and you're out that quest has been done on normal I what I recommend doing is running through them all on normal and then 
coming back on sunny side, um, which I'll explain later. For a barbarian, we're going to pick up a rugged belt first thing. It's going to be something that we can wear. Gives us five extra hit points, gets us up to 50. Talk to the general vendor over here. I would like to trade. No damage to our gear yet. We got some stuff here that we can sell. So we're going to click on add all. If you have anything that's a skill boost, so if you pick human and you take human skill boost with your first action point, you can actually do plus four to all skills. Um, there's also heroism, greater heroism, good help, and various other things that improve your skills. Um, anything that improves your charisma will improve your haggle. Your haggle skill is actually something that will increase the amount of plat that you get from talking to this guy. So if we take a look here, our haggle is minus two right now. Um, there are multiple ways to boost this through skill boosts or charisma boosts. Um, or just plain old haggle boost, which is a skill boost of its own. Um, so if you have those availabilities, use them before you click on sell. We now have, um, looks like 50 platinum. It says 48, but don't forget, we got three more silver here, which makes us eight, which bumps this up to 22, which bumps this up to, so 50, two, zero, and five, if you consolidate them properly, which the game doesn't always do. That's okay. Um, you can see that we're ranked two. We actually should have an action point to spend, and we do. I don't know why it's not showing up up here. Let's take a look at the options real quick and see if we can figure that out. Um, I always go to gameplay. I usually disable my chat content filter, but I'm gonna leave it enabled. Um, I disable these chats. <sighs> Consolidate icons. For some reason, my action point's not showing up here for the first rank, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry about it too much. You can tell that you have an action point because it's down there and it shows up in the panel here. Um, I'm actually not going to spend that yet. I'm going to go run this quest over here. Um, we're going to check the LFM panel, which by default opens... The social panel opens to guild. We're not currently in any guild. Um, that was something that they did to attempt to fix the grouping panel, which doesn't show names for everybody. What you need to do is go to who, click on the search and hit enter. <coughs> and then if you wait a moment and you go to grouping, the names will start to show up. Cobalt Island. Um, so we're going to click on that. We're going to send them a tell and we're going to ask them snowy or sunny side. going to hide content I don't own and hide groups I'm not eligible for. While I wait for him to respond, I'm actually going to make something to eat really quick. I'm thinking um, a couple of beef and bean burritos. Alright, so he's not responding anytime soon. I am actually going to go and post my own LFM. 
level one to three. Normal, we're gonna go with Hayton's Rest. We're gonna say Snowy Side. Watch on. We're gonna post that party real quick. See if we can get some people to want to join us. And let's fix my typo. My fat finger typo. We're just going to hop in here. Since we have a public LFM, um, people will be able to just join. Coming from deep in the crypt, you hear the strange and unsettling echoes that Kaya spoke of. And by the passage leading in, strange sarcophagi line the walls. I don't have any search open, ability as a, as a barbarian. My total modifier is two. Bodies go? I can try to search. You There's actually... Ah, kind I actually found it with two. In the wall. So, it's a hidden door Once here we can open. open it, you can, this is a dark and dusty passage. It doesn't look like anyone's come through here in decades. chest it's out in the open and an acid sprays out of the wall as the this gate chest is slams actually trapped. shut standing right on the edge of the platform after you've triggered the thing will actually be best for you now you can hit the gate lever here we've already looted the chest we haven't done anything except loot the chest and break a couple things it's always a good start to a quest um, let me go get my food real quick Like we have a question here. Uh, Amaraf says, "Turn down the sounds a little. All that dings from chat, quest complete, are too loud." Okay, I can barely see any noise going from those. So thank you for letting me know. Um, In-game sounds actually. Let's turn down the music. Turn off ambient sound, sound effects, user interface, combat, we'll turn that up a little bit. I like being able to hear it, well, maybe not that much. Alright, so we'll see how this sounds. How about the sound of, of um, burritos complete? And these quests, you typically want to take out the red robed what ones first because those are casters and they will do the most damage to you there's two ways to go about this you can either take out the squagon quickly to complete some optionals break the altar quickly you can see we got an optional up here 
You can I was under the impression that if you work, don't complete the optionals, you can sound. actually kill the extra extra mobs for the monster manual, which we'll get into at a later point. We don't have access to the monster manual except for the prologue as a free-to-play character. As you slay these foul cultists, take care to keep your own health up. Another treasure chest. Perhaps the cultists brought it here. I have no use for those treasure chests. They actually hold a long sword and a um, and a ma mall, um, no, not a mall, um, like a morning star or a club or something like that. Just a rusty blunt instrument and a rusty sharp instrument, so I can teach you about damage reduction. It's not of much use to me. You can see one with a red robe down here. I'm going to run up and we're going to knock him out first. Now we can do the minions. Even though they're not short, yellow, lovable guys. Uh, there's our rest shrine. Some breakables here. Can you guys hear the um, in-game sound still? Or did I turn it down too much? I'm going to go for the acolyte here. See if we can get the third optional here. In the middle of this chamber is an evil devourer altar. Buy it. When the altar collapses, a third crest appears. It glows with cold. Now I got to notice that I got an action point, and it shows up. That's cool. I don't know why it didn't show up for the first level, but that's okay. Something strange, and it don't look good. Who you gonna call? Cat Busters! Alright, so the microwave completed. I am going to go pick up my food real quick. Magical barrier blocks the way, and you fit the last crest in place. And the magic shield. The first thing I'm gonna do here is run around and kill the necromancer. So that gives me all four optionals. I'll come back for the red robe guy. Kill the zombie. Like I said, I want to get as many. As much extra stuff here as I can, so I'm gonna run around and actually break things first. I've got mischief. I might be able to get vandal out of it. Nope, not quite. So mischief is the best I can do. Onslaught bonus. Break the altar here to complete the quest. Saved Korthos and brought the Sahuagans fell scheme to naught. The treasure chest in the Plus one scimitar, some gold, yours. festival coins. Good stuff. <clears throat> At this point, we need legendary Corthos. Yes, we do. Some of the aim of the brute. Stem the Sahuagan tide, but their courage led to naught but grievous injuries. Plus one con. Need someone with more than just guts. Got some gloves we can wear there. Some more stuff to sell. The next quest can be a real pain in the butt. So we're gonna sell this stuff real quick. Oh, we got a little bit of damage to that. We can repair it. 
sell everything gets us over 100 platinum. Woohoo! We hit 100 plat. And come talk to Evan Solidus here. And he offers hirelings. I hear you have good help available. We're going to pick up a cleric hireling. Because we're a barbarian, we can handle the damage. It would be nice to not have to worry about being healed. So we pick up a cleric hireling to heal us. And now we head down to the last quest. <clears throat> when am I going to sunny side? Once I complete normal on snowy side. I don't have any way to skip Corthos Island on a first life tune uh, free to play. So I'm going to run normal here. Enter. This quest can be a real pain. The, the um, Kenneth Crystal thing here that's in here is really fragile. So we're going to get our hireling in here. Ahead is the cellar where the Kenneth Crystal um, You can see that her bar... Well, you can't see. Her bar actually loads at the bottom down behind where my bar there is. I'm going to put it up here at the top. And I'm going to lock it in place. I'm going to set her to active so that she can do whatever she wants, mostly. Um, I'm going to tell her to cast Remove Fear. I'm going to have her bless us. And then we're going to run in. And we're going to kill some stuff. First mob's gonna spawn over here. Feel the life saving heat <coughs> emanating from the magic crystal Boldar spoke of. But from the shadows approach those who would doom Corthos by destroying it. I may actually fail this quest once or twice. Because it's very difficult to do without the guys breaking the crystal. Come on. Are they gonna spawn? There we go. There's our first one. Now they come in from all angles, so if you just park yourself here near the crystal. And you let your hireling go run around. They're actually pretty good at killing stuff. Best thing about a hireling is you can tell her to keep herself fully healed. Seven left to go. Even without spot and listen, that's up there very well. Um, with a hireling, you can actually see where they're spawning because they'll run right to them. You can see those little red. Um, half moon shaped things coming up from the ground those are actually um, your listen skill being used you can hear them moving it's your ability to hear them so there's one left and the last one spawns way out here in the corner There's that. We got a couple action points to spend. We actually have three action points to spend instead of two. So it's misinforming us. I don't know why that, that is. I'll have to submit a bug report on that. Um, we have some mail. Which we can't access until we get out of Snowy Side. But that's okay. Um, 
We're gonna want bracers of assistance. Is on the people's lips as you walk by. Cautious looks have become friendly nods. Then word comes that your presence is requested in the tavern. So we head over to the tavern, where our presence is requested. <coughs> and you can see that we need to talk to Signin Bowerson. Ready as I'll ever be, let's make it so. Enter the collaborator, our normal. Get our, our hireling in here. Your waiting bears fruit. This must be the collaborator stepping in from the dark. Another thing that you'll notice. The wood defense gives the Sahagan pause, but you hear more of them gathering outside for a fight. Is um, assault. I actually have this little you know diamond-shaped icon thing here. It's um, your dice icon. It's available in both. You have a free daily roll. I'm gonna click on that. We get a free silver roll every day, so you can roll that. So I got two gold seals, el elixirs of improved healing, and 400 experience. So I'm gonna save those, put those up there real quick and lock them in place. Kill some stuff real quick. You have weathered the South Wagon storm. Now I'm actually gonna hang on to that experience for right now. He must have fled into the cellar. Ooh, gold festival coin. Awesome. I'm gonna run into here. Now, if your search is high enough, Drexelhand isn't here. Our spot's apparently high enough, but our search isn't. So a search of one. Of a secret passage. Backtracking mm. them may reveal the way to open that passage. So a search of one is not enough to find whatever this. Ah, so a search of one is enough to find that door. Okay. I just didn't get it the first time. If you don't have enough search for whatever reason, there's actually a disguised lever over here that's a barrel that you can click on and it'll open the door for you. But you get extra points if you can do a secret door. So, although you don't get any XP for it in this quest, you do in others. Some more loot here. A lever to open the door there. Anytime you search, you have to turn your auto attack back on. It automatically toggles it off on you. Another option that you have is move silently. You can sneak around. It uses your hide and listen skills to move silently. Be sneaky so they can't see or hear you coming. Useful for rogues. And yeah, not so much for barbarians. They're pretty loud and clunky. Got our scorecard here. You can see Dryad's killed seven, I've killed 13. There's been no breakables to break, so. Pop another chest open here. Silver coin, that's always good. Um, leather armor is medium. You actually have the ability to wear it, but you're not level two yet to do it. Uh, we got a chain mail shirt here, which is better than the masterwork that you're wearing. So we can put that on and get rid of that starter item. We can put our gold 
and silver coins into the back tab there. Um, starter gear cannot be sold, so we can throw it away. We're going to hang on to that armor for level 2. Plus 3 outfit is not of much use to us. So we're good here. <clears throat> Hit the lever. Lag. You can actually instruct your hireling to interact with things. has nowhere left to run. Finish the job. Gives us enough enough to take level two by running normal quests through Corthos. And we're not even on the island yet. That's a really nice ring. Make sure we hang on to that. Let's finish this quest. <coughs> Talk to Sigmund. Jacob B is dead. We're gonna pick up Mullen's great axe. Lock that into place. But only temporarily. It's time to take the fight to the Sahuagin. Out in the wild. Put that on our hot bar. What's the deal with different great axes? Mullen's great axe has less lesser monstrous humanoid bane on it, which applies to Suwagin. Um, we're going to be heading out to the island. There'll be a lot of Swagon, so we'll actually get bonus damage from them for that. Um, it does 1d6 one, one Bane damage. <clears throat> this particular one only does plus 1 fire damage. So, it's actually a little bit better to get 1d6 instead of just 1. I'm not going to do that optional quest there. Requires turbine points. And spending turbine points on a cake is not something that I normally like to do at this point. Pick up sacrifices. We can head down to Handsome Wilm here and pick up Necromancer's Doom. And the most important quest out in the island there for the first half is going to be this one by Ursula. Just redemption. I got some more selling to do. Like to trade. Repair. Nothing to repair. Sell. Nothing in here that we need. We can add all and sell. Now what we need to do is find... The Barbarian Trainer. Uh, we got Sorcerer, Ranger, Artificer, Fighter, Favorite Soul, Cleric, Paladin, Barbarian. Here we go. Let's advance to the next level. <coughs> I am going to put a point into Intimidate, two points into Balance, and one into. Nope. Two. Uh, I can only do one point in Balance. So one into Balance. And two into listen. Apparently. Next, finished. Um, Miles will spend our action points. We want the dwarven tree. 
So we're going to take that. We're going to improve our damage using Great Axes. That's a good thing to pick up. Um, at low levels, having Die Hard is good, so we're going to pick that up from Frenzied Berserker. Die Hard becomes less useful at higher levels because you're either alive or dead. They don't do... They either, they either do so much damage that you're you're just dead, or you're alive. So there's no incapacitated in higher levels, so to speak. It exists, but you'll never actually see it happen. Except on an extremely rare occurrence. So we're going to head out to the island. Enter the island. <coughs> Got some explorer here. Scout here, Gunnar Bowersim. Must be related to the, the the tavern barkeeper. Ah, sun. The quickest path is to jump down off that cliff there. Ah! Notice how I hug the wall. Hugging the wall will reduce fall damage if you don't have good tumble or feather fall. We will explain feather falling later. <coughs> Enter this quest. Get our hireling. Take a look at our enhancements here. We got Axe Training, Die Hard, and Dwarven Toughness, so nothing active that we have to put up there yet. That's a good thing. Make sure she's active. Have her give Remove Evil and Bless. The air grows damp and fetid as the ancient tunnel descends. We start sliding down the hill here. We're going to have some swagons come up behind us. No, there's going to be some ahead of us. So apparently there's none behind us on this level. Ah, until he rings the bell. Okay. So you hit that, and then the one behind us comes out of the door. Break stuff, kill stuff, good stuff. That's a starter potion. For some reason, that particular potion has you re requires that you. Oh. So some of them require that you accept them, and some of them don't. Interesting. I don't know. Um, breaking stuff. Get down here. Method there. Hireling senses something. There's actually two hidden doors here. And we can find them. That's awesome. The tunnel splits here. Which way to the giantish divide? You hear a gate ratcheting open somewhere behind you. Some breakables in here that we can do. There's another hidden door and a lever behind this one. Is that what it is? Strange. You hear a gate ratcheting open somewhere behind you. We don't have a trapper, so we're going to actually hit this lever. If you have a trapper, you can go down the left path, or you can send your trapper down the left path, then hit the lever. And then you come over here, and the doors will close behind you. You'll get locked in with some swagons, some fishmen. Some breakables in here. A valve. <coughs> you hear ratcheting machinery. 
Something at the sound of distant snoring warns you that you are not alone here. If you're careful, you may be able to take the sleeping guards by surprise. Kill. Break, 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 break. Valve. There's a hidden door over here. I do not believe my one search will find it though. I'm actually surprised my one search finds that. Pinch in, you can close this door to disable the trap. I'm not sure what this valve does. Can ring the warning gong here twice. With the gong's reverberations, you hear a slight rumble from the larger room, <coughs> but then it stops. Laggy. Some arrows to pick up for plat. If you don't have the search to be able to open that side, you can just click on the valve here. You'll see that my hireling senses a trap. Pretty sure there's a trap box for it somewhere around here. I'm just not exactly sure where it is. I am lagging again. The trap actually comes off of this post right here, but I'm not triggering it for some reason. I must have already disabled it somehow. Maybe the valve here disables it. The second strike of the gong produces the telltale sound of cracking ice. Now we can drop down here. You can use the ladder or just jump down. It took a little bit of damage, but I get plenty of hit points. Lever to pull here. I'm gonna cross the other side. There's no reason to hold levels up to level 3. Once you hit level 3, it may be useful to hold levels. You use our ring see. of water breathing to give us a bubble head for a minute and a half. We can swim. Surface. You emerge from the murky water with great relief. The air seems slightly cooler here. Search here. A little bit laggy. But 
Our one search is again enough to find the door here. Shrine there if you need it. This valve right here will actually open a grate in the floor in the previous room where the ice was so people don't have to swim. It's a piker valve. Let's you let the pikers through. The temperature plunges as you fought ahead. The giantish device must be near. Got some winter boots here. That's good. I like boots. Give us three cold resistance. So three points of cold damage is taken right off the top. actually going to try to pull that spider back. Lagging a little bit here. Alright. When you get to the top of the stairs here, you're going to want to tell your hireling to stay put. Ahead is the giant. The freezing mists it is spewing are directed the wrong way. With the right timing, you can get close enough to redirect them. There's actually a trap here, and I'm going to lag out right in the middle of it. puzzle here that we have to do. The mist solidifies into ice over the ancient creature, but it's not enough. You need both jets to affect a thing of this size. Z twice will actually um, fix your little blue bubbles being lagged out there. Oh. And we're done. Creature, guaranteeing its slumber. Us is safe for now. Come on, finish out. Put my plate away in the sink.
steam billows from the hidden entrance to an underground complex. I need to go get some more cookies at the store after my stream tonight. Alright, so here we are. Tell Dryad to come to you. Now the best thing to do here is actually just run to the next quest. Hopefully we'll be on Sunnyside by the time we're done with this stream. And we'll be at least level 3. That's the goal, to be level 3 on Sunnyside. And then I'm going to farm out a bunch of XP for next week's stream. But I want to make sure that all level up choices, action point spending, everything are done on stream. So that you guys can see what the build is. Thinking second life for this build is actually going to be a barbarian druid mix with a um, bear form. I'm not sure how that's going to play out yet. So I'll have to experiment with that. Maybe on Lamania or something. By the time I get to level 20 on this tune. To an old abandoned manufactory. This is the one where we have to get Hayton. This is the one that we need to advance the chain. You enter one of the laboratories where decades ago... House Caniff, the doorway ahead has been boarded up. Oddly, the work looks very recent. You go, Dryad. I didn't know she was chaotic. Or had the AI to be able to break things. Although, I guess those don't count as breakables, so... We get all the breakables in there with our bow. Hey, who let Shu in on Orion? I don't know, random. Welcome, Ninja. I am in um, the Caneth Manufactory looking for Lars Hayton. You are welcome to join. I'm also streaming this on DDO Stream as part of the Shoe Cobbles A insert build here. If you would like to watch it at some point to see my build. Barrier humming with compressed energy, resolutely keeps your time. You hope you can find a way to disable it somehow.
I see jets of some alchemical compound coat these humming canid power crystals in a heart. Upon turning the valve, you hear a definite alteration in the pitch of the hiss as the gas struggles to flow around your obstruction. Are you in the quest chip? Without the alchemical jets coating the Canid power crystals, you can now easily destroy them. As the last crystal shatters, the hum of power slowly fades into a heavy silence. Actually, gonna skip that door to the optional because I don't have a lock picker. Who in the flame are you? And we're gonna wait here for Ninja. Just see if Ninja shows up. So, 240 width, 466. that right in there. Alright, I'm going to start this one. We can rerun it on hard together after. Oh no, the Sawagan found me. Suddenly the air shimmers with devourer magic. The Sahagin have followed you in and are attacking. <laughs> in your hands now. Oh, 
more attacks. Stop until you're dead. Magic is gone. We beat them off. This time. We beat them off. Aiden this time. After surviving this latest attack, perhaps you should talk to him again. Hey, bless does remove pain. Go now. Tell Ursa to hold the barricade just a little longer. Then, meet Amalgam at the base of Misery's Peak when you're ready. With hate <laughs> to help, the people of Korthos might finally win their struggle. this <coughs> a mangled sewer grate leads to an old abandoned Kenneth manufactory Recall and go get Ninja. We're going to pick up a uh, Feather Cloak here. Your transformed the village. It seems as if all of Korthos were holding out for news of your next great victory with bated breath. Do some repairs. We'll save our Feather's Cloak. Add all sell. Feather Cloak goes up here. We can wear it. It's our only cloak at the moment. talk to Ingram because we've completed the redemption quest.
I'm actually going to pick up the battered helm because it's got a haggle on it. I will be right there to pick you up in a minute, ninja. Who chose to go the difficult way? Alright, there's a shrine right there you can use. Click on this red shrine. Okay then. Apparently not interested in grouping. So, we'll do that. <coughs> I really don't want to run the parts of the chain that I've already run to flag him for Misery's Peak either, so. What I'm going to do is run down here. I'm going to pop my feather's cloak. Gives me feather fall. Makes it so I can fall slowly. Hey, I got a rare. I got Zier. Couple things in the chest there I can pick up. That's nice. The Slightly obscured by the falling water. You enter a musty hall, heavy with silence and the weight of dark stone. We're on Necromancer's Doom. Get our hireling. If somebody watching the stream wants to roll up a low-level um, healer and a low-level trapper and run with me on the stream every week, sudden, that would be fine by me. Of rot and decay your nostrils. Something in the corner, you see the glint of metal through. As the secret door slides open, you see a magical cell across the chamber. Could it be holding Drusa? only be leveling on the stream, spending action points on the stream, but I will be farming out XP during the week when appropriate uh, between levels. Yellow, yellow connection box there. Everybody loves running Corthos, right? Level three should be my next feat. When I'll get power attack. Which allows me to do more damage. Ah, you'll see I got Swagin Hunter Deed in my monster manual. Let's take a look at the monster manual real quick. As a free to play account, you only get the prologue, uh, monster manual prologue. It gives you access to spider. Skeleton, human, suwagin, and rat. Um, you can see how many of each you killed. You can get what types you've killed. For spider, I've killed both karak and small brown spider. 
uh, skeleton. I've killed four regular skeletons. Humans, I've killed looks like five different types so far. Suwagan, I've killed 12 different types. I've picked up an account deed for getting 12 out of 12 types. Um, there's another one for 12 out of 36 types. Um, and then for rat, I've only done two reanimated rats so far, one type. Which I'm actually surprised they show up as rat instead of undead. Random rice says nope, but I don't know to what. Maybe he's yeah, not. We, maybe nope to being interested in running a low level tune on the stream with me. But not I don't know. Dead. Killed Jacoby he's here. He's Thought we already killed this guy once. a curse and swears to return again before collapsing in a heap of bones. You take the self from his remains. And that's done. <coughs> I don't have a trapper to unlock this door. There's um some decent level one stuff in there, I suppose. It gives you a UMD item. There there's a the possibility of getting a pair of UMD gloves. Yes, Corthos fun. Corthos is a blast. Everybody loves Corthos. A first life trapper is a play to play. A pain to play. Yeah, probably is. I'm going to actually do one as one of my builds in a future stream. Um, I expect to be able to get to. Oh, Zir again. I expect to be able to get to level. I don't know, three or four today, and then maybe five to six on the next stream, and then maybe seven or eight on the stream after that. Um, I ex And then after I hit level eight, I expect it to take pretty much one stream per level. Um, pretty much. I might get two levels per stream, I'm not sure. Yep, there's a shield clicky in there, which is nice to protect from magic missiles, like the one I just got hit by. There's a few nice clickies, rare things. Stackable UMD is certainly rare. Let's go try the other rare over here, speaking of rares. We had Zir, which is a rare method. 20-ish times later, nah. That's all? You've only run Corthos 20 times? Oh. Got a name Swagin over here. He's a rare, and he's he's actually really rare. He's hard to get to show up. I don't think I've seen a, a Baron before either. Will be nice in the Monster Manual. Misery's Peak is kind of boring, um, unless you're a pro at it. If you can do it really quickly. And I can do it fairly quickly. It's not that boring. And it's not that boring when you take the alternate path and you go kill the dragon. That's really fun. <laughs> oh, wait. They don't have that yet. Maybe Legendary Misery's Peak when they bring it out. People have been asking for it for years. Maybe it'll eventually happen. It did used to be super tough, and it's still reasonably tough for a first life person that doesn't have any idea what they're doing. Especially if they don't have a guild and ship buffs and they can't get to Sunnyside to get those buffs. I'm trying to be gentle on my talking because I'm actually coughing a lot. Spoiler, maybe. No, not yet. There are no immediate plans for a legendary misery speak. Although it has been asked for many times over the years.
I want to kill that dragon, just not at second level. Well, you're no fun. You could do it at level four, you know, on elite. Resilient spider webs block your path. They don't look capable of withstanding blows from your weapon. Misery's Peak's actually a second level quest on normal, so you can do it four on elite and not lose your bravery bonus. <laughs> Get full XP. The cells in this room hold a number of desperate Korthos villages. I bet it would be good XP. Oh, you don't have to worry about coil anymore. Shouldn't be at level five. You should be one level over. Should take a 10% hit, I think it is. So this quest, you get to test your jumping skills. Which can be really fun when you're laggy. So I'm going to try to do it quickly before I start being laggy again. Yay! And you get an arcane skeleton. I remember when he was tough. Not so much anymore. There's actually a trap here. Trap books for it's right here if you have a trapper. Otherwise you can actually run up along the wall here and avoid the trap. You have breached the devourer sanctum. From ahead you hear a woman's plaintive cry for help. Arissa is not here, so I'm going to talk to these people real quick. Arissa can sometimes be up here in that little cove over in the corner. The last and sometimes the she's not. She's down in the rising and running for freedom. thing down here at the bottom. The and his chest locked. Not, not sure what that's about.
the um, arcane skeleton's chest used to be locked? I don't remember that. The evil spill innocent blood no more. Hey, we got ransack. Ooh, another gold coin. Nice. And we're done. Got another action point. Finish out here. Let's go hit Misery's Peak. <coughs> That's what everybody's been waiting for, right? We got about an hour left to the stream. This entrance leads down into an ancient Kenneth Aqueduct. When the quest was in the harbor. I don't remember that quest being in the harbor. Alright, Titan. Make sure you give her a kiss for me, too. See if our Sissic is over here. He is. That's a name spider. That gives us all three rare encounters for this area. Fast work, great axe. I don't usually spend much time on slayers or explorers. I do like to try to get the, the, the rares at least once for the monster manual. I don't know if I have the monster manuals for all of them, but I believe I have Spider, and Swaggin, and... Last one was actually Ice Method, so I didn't have that one. But we're up to three spiders now. That's good. I'm going to go to the camp over here. You can actually sell and repair. A scraggly dwarf sits on a log, trying in vain to keep warm. Potion of Cure Light will hang on to. Potion of Jumping will hang on to. Nothing else I need there. Sell it all. Talk to Amalgam at the base of Misery's Peak. And we're actually going to post the Misery's Peak. This will give us 7 out of 12 explorers. A bone emanates from the mouth of Misery's Peak. Make sure that going in as a public LFM didn't change our LFM. It did. So I can mark that as 3. I don't like how it changes the level when you go in as public. I do wish that some, that is something I wish they would fix. You're here. Come. There isn't much time. That's good, because I'm in a hurry. Speak plainly, old man. Yes. Okay. Sure. Yep. Salinas, Let's do it. I will begin the barrier for you. Ready. Charge! Good. Now to clear your path. Hayden clears the passageway for you. Now to find this quarry mine sunder artifact. Go quickly. I will mask your presence from the Mind Flayer. Victims of the Devara cult arise from the icy realm, bound to slay the living and add to their grim number.
What in the flame? And here is Misery's Peak in all its wonderful glory. Trying to go through as quick as reasonably possible. Got ourselves an archer over here. Probably our biggest threat. Some zombies, take them out quick. Always take out the red robes first. Frozen adventurers, Several let's take them out. Their faces set in silent eternal screams. See some little red arcs. Popping up from the ground there. Some ghouls. I can see them using our listen skill. Red robe, take him out. Ghouls can come up and chase me, I don't care. Or they can white dot. If you get two people in here, it goes really, really fast because um, one person goes left, one person goes right type thing. And you get twice as much done. You get to this room, one person can go up there and the other one can come over here and work on the other half. I usually go backwards. Ooh, potion of bull strength, that's nice. Pad there, light that up. Ice spider. The heavy door is locked by a pair of signal crystals. <coughs> Hopefully, the control mechanisms are in this cavern somewhere. chest. Ooh, name spider. Chest and shrine. There's a lot of shrines in this quest. It's one of the few things that makes it too easy in my opinion is the fact that there's so many shrines. It would be just as fun and completable with half as many shrines. It's a level four. That's not a bad club. I'm gonna hang on to that. The new loot system coming out in update 29 will actually give loot based on the quest level. So if you have a level 2 quest based on the chest level, not the quest level, I take that back. So if you have a level 2, ch two quest, your chests are level 2 by default. Um, there are multiple loot bonuses. You can get a loot bonus weekend. There's a dragon mark that increases loot. There are a few items that increase loot bonus. Um, there's all ways to, all kinds of ways to improve loot. So you could theoretically get plus seven, I think they said, all together, all encompassing between the bonuses and the gems and the other stuff. Uh, so in a level 2 quest on normal, with even a plus 3 bonus gives you plus level 5 loot, which is really, really nice. Um, if you ransack, then you start lowering your loot level, and it would start going down again. It'll be affected by that as well. 
Um, I look forward to seeing some of these new scales for the effects and posting the results of what I find as a scale table. I want to make a graph for each one and post it on the wiki for how random loot scales with levels. The second signal crystal. Mark and Gem don't stack. You hear the stone door at the base of the cavern rolling open. Nope, but you can get gems and buddy weekends and all kinds of things. So there's multiple ways to get up to plus seven. There's also a treasure map piece and all kinds of stuff. So you can stack up some stuff. Pretty sure the dragon mark does stack at some some level or maybe it's something that they're going to change i don't know but according to the stream the other day they do stack at, at some level or at least they're supposed to apparently so if they're not submit a bug report to ddobugs.turbine.com and let them Take a look into it. Peace doesn't stack either. I guess I'd submit a bug report and let them look into it. Um, Chills Apparently they're supposed to. Spine as you finally so. come face to face with a dragon that has been terrorizing Korthos. Even if they're rest, not supposed to, it is a truly awesome. They will let us know. The door at the rear of the cabin comes attracted by the roar of combat rush out to confront you I don't use gems so I don't know what they stack with I haven't found them incredibly beneficial for me to use so I actually have quite a few mediums from monster manual stuff I just don't ever use them free samples that kind of stuff Maybe with the new loot system, new random loot system, I will. It's entirely a possibility.
doing pretty good on time going through misery's peak here the ground quavers and you look down to see a tunnel beneath the ice the dragon roars as it thunders after Selimas and Jeets and Talbon. Something I'd like to see is a running running quest clock. Shows you how long you've been in each quest. Actually, I've asked for that, and it's not in the immediate plans. Also, we've asked for um, some of the players' council members have asked for a, a UI interface upgrade, and it would take an extremely large amount of resources to accom accomplish accomplish that. So it's not in the immediate plans either. But if it's something you're interested in, find a thread about it on the forums and let the developers know. The more feedback they get that it's something of desire, the higher up the food chain it goes. It's kind of how they work. These rooms are so easy on normal. You feel fresh frozen air gust in from the newly opened door below. I wish I had a cleave attack. Oh well. I suppose it's time to shrine up. I might need my feather fall clicky one more time. You will die. Ha 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 ha. I am a very impatient person in this section, so I just like break one, keep right on running, summon her to catch up, break one, two or three, summon her, break one, and fight them all at the top. back down hit the pressure plates or runes or whatever they are <sighs> I 
and that's Misery's Peak. Stand here and watch the show for a minute. Waves of psychic energy pound into you as you spot a green crystal on the ledge of the At last, this <coughs> must be the quarry mind sunder. The Mind Flayer and Dragon are locked in a contest of wills. This could be your chance to destroy the Mind Sunder. The Mind Flayer shrieks as it loses the Mind Sunder's power. The Dragon reasserts its will and looks very annoyed. Poof! That mind flayer wasn't destroyed on its own plane, so therefore it has not been killed. It's been simply sent back. I don't think I've ever seen this ancient crystal be attackable before. After six years of playing. Here, take this portal, so you won't have to walk back. Good, because I don't like to walk. And we're done. And like magic. With Corthos. Savior of Corthos. So we're just gonna grab but our has greater plans for you. Than just this small village. Anger's gift, I guess. Slap that on. We don't need our amulet of the boot anymore. Amulet of the boot. That's funny. Uh, let's go talk to Vigor Mayor. Viggy Store Mayor. Anger Step. We'll grab those. That'll give us our Barbarian Anger's Wrath, plus two to hit with all attacks. We're still going to want to hang on to those cold boots. So let's lock those in place and put our step up in there. What else do we have? We might need our cat's dexterity there. Um... Con one versus strength one. We'll take the strength. Thank you. I got some action points to spend. Let's see here. Um, The next thing to pick up is a power rage. Hmm, those are two action points per thing. Ah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit close so we don't spend any points. We're gonna use all three in extra rages so that we get some more rages. Now we have seven rages instead of one. That's good. Uh, map. Handsome will, and then we're out of here. It doesn't matter what we take because we already have goggles. No, we don't. Uh, so attack bonus plus one is good. Let's go hit the hit the mark, hit the harper, hit the harbor, hit the harbor. Bind them right out. All right, so let's take a look here. What's our skills look like? 
haggle is minus one diplomacy is minus two intimidate is three this guy right here harbor guard if you have an intimidate 10 diplo 12 bluff 11 or haggle 5 and a copper which is probably the easiest to get to um, you can get an extra quest completion that just gives you some loot um, no XP or favor for it, just a little bit of loot, which if you're in a guild, it's nice because you get some guild favor. You have to do it before level four. So, unless we get our Intim up, I don't see that happening. That's okay. I got that. That's a level two chain. Run that real quick. Um, we've got mail. So here's a mailbox right here in the harbor. So we got five total favor on Orion. We get 50 turbine points. So we can delete that one. And we've got from the DDO store 25 for hitting 25. That's good. That gives us what total? we're going to have to do is because free to play is pretty it, it can be difficult to level past a certain level um, when I first started my first time I was capped at um, level 18 I think it was and I couldn't progress any further because there wasn't enough content playing just free to play um, and I even picked up a couple packs along the way and one of the things that you can do to make it so that you can level all the way to 20 is um, save your turbine points as you're leveling up and collecting favor. Um, and then when you get to a point where you're stuck, like if you hit level 12 and you're just not advancing, there are no more quests to really run um, to gain experience. You can um, spend some turbine points to pick up some content at that level. Um, and then continue to level. So, uh, looks like we have 130 turbine points so far. We go to accounts, adventure packs, low level, uh, lowest to highest. The cheapest, the least expensive pack is 250. We can pick from Chanticore or the Catacombs. And then they go up in price. Um, we are likely going to get stuck around level 11. Um, so a pack that might be good to pick up when we get there will be Sorrow Dusk, which has got 6 to 10. Which is actually 8 to 12 on Elite. Um, Delara's Tomb is kind of expensive. Three Barrel Cove doesn't really get high enough for the levels. Tangle Root is a little bit low on the level side. Looks like Sorrow Dusk is going to be our best bet. So we want to save up 450 Turbine Points for a Sorrow Dusk pack. If we don't get stuck by level 12, then we're going to be in mid-level stuff. Um, so our options might be... Um, Necropolis Part 3, Necro 3, which is 11 to 12, which is 13 to 14 on Elite. Um, Attack on Stormreach is 13. Trials of the Archons is a really good one to pick up. Um, it has a heroic level 13. This might be where we actually go. <clears throat> That's a really good one to pick up, but it doesn't have a lot of experience really per se. Um, but it does have some really nice gear that we can pick up. Um, Demon Sands is a common one people pick up, and one of the most common first packs is Ruins of Giant Hold, but that's like 950, it might be above what we can afford, so we'll see what we get. Now, Vault of Night was also a popular one, although it's got a lot of XP in it, it might be something worth considering as well. Um, but for now, we are going to just run the Cardamon series, we've got... 20 minutes left of this stream 
and then we will be back next week. Um, it looks like I'm at rank 9. So, ah, crap. I forgot to pick up a hireling. Oh, well. Hey, we got somebody to pop right in. Hey, how's it going? Just stepped in. Cool. I forgot to bring a hireling with me and I forgot to do the breakables before I talked to Tamber, so I'm going to try to get those now. If you want to hold the fort in the middle. There's Vandal, a little bit more for con uh, Ransack. We already have Conquest, so... Not really a concern in this type of quest. And there's Ransack, so we don't have to worry about any more breakables, just cover the middle. That other tune right there is a level 2 Artificer. Um, Warforge gives enchant weapons, it's a nice spell to have, increases the enchantment bonus of your weapon by one, also has the ability to get traps if we come into any trap quests <clears throat> for additional experience, has a little artificer pet which is really cute. Actually a pretty good damage dealer at low levels. Very useful. Makes a good lever puller as well at higher levels. They do need an overhaul on their UI, but... That rune arm you're using actually goes really good if you have any crafting levels, if you put Impulse 36 on it. Impulse 36 is a good, good thing to craft onto that rune arm.
I'm assuming it's the thought spike. I'm actually going to kill the kobolds. Although I don't have that, so... Yes, Iron Defenders are cute. <coughs> Sell and repair real quick. This free-to-play build, the... Um, so we got some Sibiru Dragon Shard Fragments, we're going to hang on to those. Kyber Dragon Shard Fragments, we're going to hang on to those. Everything else can go bye-bye. We did get a red bag though, so we got a collectibles bag. We can turn that on and collect stuff. And that'll put all a whole bunch of stuff into a bag for us, which is very nice. Those go into a green ingredients bag that we don't have yet. All right, so we're heading to part two. <coughs> you enter into smashing crates place. in here, so I don't really Please need a higher light. The walls. Time to start smashing. Exits leave the room. Since we have a trapper, you might want to go get the trap before we complete this. There is a trap and a hidden door in this quest, even with the smashing the boxes. If you go all the way to the end, I can actually probably get the um, hidden door for you. Or show you where it is anyway. I don't know if one hidden door and one trap is enough to make a difference, but they are there, so. up the ladder there. Then we got our witch doctor here. If you go up the ladder, I'll get the lever. And the trap's actually on the other side of the room. Might get us 10% trap bonus. Yeah, not quite. Now 
Now we just go smash some crates. Get two crates left. So I got a stuck spot. So what I'm gonna do is a slash LOC and that shows us um, you are at R1 LX 496 LY 16 instance 2049 C inside OX. 115.73 OY 165.68 OZ negative 105.59 H135. So let's stick that back down where it belongs. And we can use the slash stuck command. You could tell that you're stuck when you get like in a floaty arms up in the air type thing like you're trying to jump or land and you're not landing anywhere. Sometimes you can break out of it with um, tumbling or jumping, but not in this case. And I lagged. Now we go, teleporting. So using slash duck lets you teleport out. Red box it. I'm gonna go out for fries and a burger in a bit with the guys. Should be an interesting night. And I'm out of the corner. Let's go get the um, the shrine on the map while we wait. Oh, that's not the shrine room. There's a rare in here though. On the next part. Shrine must be further up the path. There's a rare in this area too on the next part. Here's a shrine. There, now it's on the map.
Alright, we're running out of time in here, so I'm just going to complete Heal Off the Red Box Part 3. successfully stopped Hazardale's illicit trade. Just about to wrap up the stream here. I'm going to run the last part of this chain. See if I have enough XP to take, um, use up my last action point. A little bit late, Taco. So I got a couple action points here. Um, I got one action point. Take Ravager. pop into part three, and then we'll call it a stream. You make your way back into Hazardale's warehouse. Stealth might be an asset here. I've only got like five minutes left of the stream here. I'm actually just going to kind of zerk this one a little bit. A wary kobold guards this room. You may be forced to fight. I do want to check for the optionals though. Like Chernak here. as many chests as we can. One of the things about barbarians is when you rage, you get um, what's called fatigued after you're done with your rage. You can counter that with the um, remove exhaustion spell or lesser restore rather.
There should be a trap box right at the top of the stairs here. Please do not pick up the um, container yet. I'm gonna go do the other trap too. I wanna do both tra traps. The other side is open and that trap is available. Two minutes left to the stream. And we got a tamper bonus, that's cool. Not really worried about ransack or conquest in this particular quest. Pick up the container and we're done. And that gives me enough to take level three. Um, over the course of the, the week, I will be um, banking enough experience to take um, Level four, I should actually take level three before I leave and then bank enough experience for be one short of level five. So let's do that. Turn this in real quick. Great Axe of Rapid Strikes looks good. Let's um, lock that. Take a look at our helm here. DR one. No, I don't care about DR. Cloak, Charisma two, don't really care. Armor, death block, that might be useful. Got another potion here for cure moderate, might be useful. I can sell the rest of that. <coughs> Let me take level three real quick. And then I will run quest and farm up. I, I will probably do the normal and that. The hard and elite Corthos runs on Sunnyside. I'm not going to do them tonight. Let's do here. Next level is a Barbarian. Intimidate. Intimidate. Balance. Uh, listen. Next, I get a feat. The next feat should be Power Attack. And that's level three. You can see you got these little semi-filled in dark blue cubes to make those go away. You just do an Alt Z Alt Z. It's a little display bug UI bug that they've never fixed, and hopefully a redo of the UI will fix that. Um, so yeah, I'll be back next week. I will have enough experience to take level four, and be one experience point short of level five. <coughs> so what I'll do is next week I will take level four. And then I will use one of my daily die XP stones. I'm just going to pick up some quests real quick while I talk. I got a minute left on the stream. Um, I'll use one of my XP stones, um, one of these things, um, probably a 100 experience one to take level five. And then I will be running an hour's worth of quests to See if I can get level 6 before the stream is out. Um, and then I'll work on bank in 7 and 8. So, hopefully, well, next week I'll be taking levels 4 and 5, and hopefully level 6. And then we'll go from there. Oh, come on. Pick up Dark the Deranged. Uh, everybody have a good week. I hope you enjoyed the stream and you learned how to make a, level, a barbarian up to level 3 that anybody can play on a free-to-play account. Um, I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a good week, everybody. Maybe starting next week I'll do a giveaway too. I'm not sure yet. I'll have to look into that. Have a good week. See you next week at 3. And I will see you Tuesday... If you're up in the morning, Tuesday from 8 to 10 Eastern, I will be doing um, DDO Wiki Talk with T13, me. Um, so my next stream will be Tuesday morning at 8 Eastern, assuming I wake up on time and my internet's working. 
Um, see you then.